and then I do this. Yeah, now it's gone, I think. There. Now is it okay? Yes, yes perfect. Brilliant. So I'm not going to speak for four and a half hours. That's, that's the first thing that's Im important to know. Uh, and I, but I am going to be around for the next four and a half hours, taking any questions about this silly game that I made and uh, just making sure that people know some basic tactics. So there are, there are sort of technical tactics and tactics. You saw Scott using Linearith, which is a tactic specific to solving, you know, inequalities in totally ordered monoids or something, whatever it, you know, whatever generality it works in. Uh, but there are sort of basic logic tactics that are needed everywhere. And my job is to just make sure that by the end of today, everyone knows these 10 basic tactics. Uh, and one way of learning them is by playing through the natural number game. And indeed many undergraduates at Imperial College have learned them by doing exactly this. So uh, if you haven't played through it at all, then now is a perfect time to do it. Uh, if you have played through it, then there's a couple of other things you can do. But of course, if you want, you can just go and, you know, learn something far harder. You can go and hang out with, uh, you can go and hang out with um, Rob Lewis and learn about metaprogramming. And let me just say now that I personally know absolutely nothing about metaprogramming and I've still managed to write a lot of lean code that does sort of interesting mathematics. So metaprogramming is, isn't somehow isn't a prerequisite, but on the other hand, I'll also remark that some of the most interesting mathematics I've done uh, was working with people that did know metaprogramming and would do the metaprogramming for me uh, when it was kind of useful. So you don't need to know about metaprogramming, but it is handy. I, I don't know anything about it, but I do know something about basic tactics. So let me get started. So the main learning objectives in this, in this Zoom session uh, we're going to make sure that you understand these three tactics uh, because you can't get anywhere without knowing about the rewrite tactic and the REFL tactic. And then here are some more uh, also incredibly useful tactics. These, these are all just basic logic tactics that you need to know if you want to get anywhere. Uh, and they're all, you know, they're all somehow showcased in the natural number game. And if, if you know all of these tactics on the screen here, then you can basically prove that the natural numbers are a you know totally ordered commutative semi ring or whatever they are. So uh, there's those things, and then I think oh, there's some drama going on in the kitchen that I'll ignore. Uh, and if you play the natural number game, you'll also get used to writing basic tactic proofs in Lean, and uh, which is which is the goal of today. And really, the other thing that you should do by the end of today is you should um, you should make sure that Lean Project is working because it's just Lean Project is this glorious tool where if anybody says anything of the form I'm stuck I can't make this work if they if they got you know if they're even if they have some very complicated stuff written down if they're working on a project this is the point if you're working on a project and you're stuck then you can say help and someone else can download your project using this lean project command and then they can see exactly what you can see and uh, they can maybe help solve your you know solve your problems so lean project is kind of a re it's an absolute pain we've got problem after problem with people saying that it doesn't work and we have to make sure that by the end of today you know we don't want to be worrying about installation issues on tuesday onwards so please make sure that by the end of today, you have Lean Project working on your computer. Uh, so those are the four, those are the four main goals we're going for today. Uh, and as I say, if you know all of this stuff already, then uh, why not go and learn about metaprogramming? Uh, so brief introduction to why the natural number game even exists. Uh, I initially got interested in Lean, not because I was interested in doing sort of research. I mean, now I do tend to do my research in Lean. Uh, but initially I got interested because I, because of pedagogical reasons, I thought it would be, um, a, you know, a cool teaching tool. And, uh, and so I started using it and tried to, to make lots of little teaching tools and little teaching puzzles. And the one that bubbled to the top, uh, 
was the was proving lemmas about natural numbers because because for this one you didn't need to know a huge amount about lean's maths library and uh you see scott was showing great expertise scott was using library search and coming up with all kinds of lemmas from lean's maths library but with the natural number game you just build all these lemmas by yourself and so it's somehow much easier to keep track of you know what you have and uh where things are and so this one was somehow the biggest hit and uh it turned from, you know, it turned from uh, a kind of a, you know, a, a basic lean problem that people would work on with lean installed on their computers. It turned into something that you could actually run without installing lean. You could just run it via a web browser. So Mohamed Padrampo uh, was a PhD student. He's just graduated uh, in dynamical systems at Imperial, but he knew a lot of web stuff and he was coming along to my lean sessions. And so we collaborated together. I wrote the lean code and Mohamed did all the web interface borrowing on earlier work of uh, Patrick and Brian. Uh, so that was how the natural number game was born. And uh, let me just say before, before we sort of launch into it and I'll play a couple of levels and then let other people play it. Uh, let me just say what's going on behind the scenes. So Lean uses type theory, which is very, very different to set theory in some sense, but in another sense, it's the same as set theory in the sense that they prove the same theorems. You can make set theory within type theory, and you can make type theory within set theory. Uh, and so, and they're equiconsistent. So if you can, you know, if you, if you just spent your entire life thinking about doing mathematics in set theory, then that's fine. If you start now thinking about it in type theory, then somehow at the foundational stage, things are very different, but after a while, uh, after a while, things become the same. In fact, let me, this is the standard example I give to mathematicians when I'm trying to convince them that type theory is not that terrifying. So in type theory, the definition of the reals is it's the completion of the rationals. So Cauchy sequences, modulo equivalence. And the definition of the rationals uh, is it's the field of fractions of the integers. So all these are exactly the same, right? And the definition of the integers is it's, you know, the monoid localization of the natural numbers, if you like, or n squared modulo and equivalence relation. So the definitions of all of those things are just the same as in set theory, but the definition of the natural numbers is completely different uh, because the definition of the natural numbers in set theory is it exists because of an axiom. And the definition of the natural numbers in type theory is it exists because of a different kind of axiom. Uh, so in set theory, the natural numbers is somehow built as you know lots and lots of empty sets and sets containing empty sets uh, but in type theory it's built using inductive types so there's how the natural numbers are defined in the natural number game they're defined as an inductive type so this is all hidden from the user they're defined as an inductive type with two constructors uh, so the natural numbers the natural numbers are defined by this they're defined by piano's axioms they say zero is a natural number, the successor of a natural number is a natural number, and that's the end. You know, th those are the only ways you can make natural numbers. And when you type those commands into lean, uh, four, four things are created. So obviously the natural numbers are created. A new type appears uh, called my nat, uh, and two new constructors appear, my nat dot zero and my nat dot suck, just called zero and suck in the natural number game. Uh, so these are two functions which you can create natural numbers with. Uh, zero is a function that takes no input. Zero is a constant. Uh, zero just spits out a natural number called zero. And suck, this successor function, it takes as input a natural number and spits out another natural number. So you can use zero to make your first natural number, and then you can use the successor function to make all the others. And the fourth thing it creates is a recursor. It creates a, basically a principle of induction and a principle of recursion at the same time. They're, bo they're both one function. And uh, they just say, if you, want me to, if you want to define a function on the natural numbers, then tell me where zero goes. And if you know where n goes, tell me where n plus one goes. And that's it. That's what the recursor does. So all of these, all of these things just magically appear in Lean's system when you run this inductive uh, command here. And uh, all of this goes on behind the scenes. So this is just, you know, this is just an illustration as to what's happening behind the scenes. And uh, the recursor I find slightly scary. Uh, and so I hide it from the user uh, th and they never see it. I just say things like, oh, now let's define addition by the following axioms. But it's, what's actually happening is I'm using the recursor to define addition. 
So the recursor lets you, and I was always told when I learned mathematics, Imre Leader told me that you prove things by induction when you define things by recursion. And that's the difference between induction and recursion. But in lean, actually, induction and recursion are the same thing uh, because induction is defining functions from the natural numbers to proofs and recursion is defining functions from the natural numbers to sets. You see, so we have uh, sets and elements and we have propositions and proofs. And these are both, oh, I put element and set. It should probably say set and element. Uh, and these are both, these are both, you know, one idea in lean, the type and the term. You know, some types are sets and some types are true false statements. And then if, if the type is a set, then the term is an element. And if the type is a proposition, then the term is a proof. Uh, so that's why we only need recursion, not induction. So that's what's happening behind the scenes. And then I define addition and multiplication and exponentiation using the recursor and hide these away from people because the problem is they're written, they're written in term mode and uh, the, proofs, the proofs, which are the fun parts, are written in tactic mode. And tactic mode is exactly, as a mathematician, the first thing you should learn. And so all proofs are written in tactic mode. And the idea of the natural number game is to forget about all that stuff I just told you and just sort of get proving straight away. So let's get started. I'll play through a couple of levels and then, uh, in, you know, and then you can spend the rest of the afternoon either playing through it if you haven't played through it before, or if you have played through it before, then I'll just show you some little bonus stuff that you can do. And if you can do all the bonus stuff as well, then, uh, you know, go and... Re yeah, I, yeah, I think Rob, is, uh, Rob has got four videos that you can watch. You can, you can, start, Rob's, uh, you can start Rob's metaprogramming thing two hours late and just watch the videos there. So you, know, you can switch between the two streams this afternoon. Uh, so I put some links in the link for the... I think I'm sharing my screen, right? So I might be able to, uh, I might be able to just show you if I do this. There we go. So Kevin, here's, hello. Kevin, do you mind if I say something to Patrick? No. So I just want to warn people that there is a, something of a gap between, uh, if, if you've done the natural number game, but nothing else, you're not yet ready to, to watch uh, <laughs> Rob's uh, talk. So, so if you're in this situation, you, you, you can just either uh, help beginners just stay around and, and help people who haven't done the natural number game yet, or, or you can just uh, do whatever you want and uh, I mean, and there join are us again tomorrow morning because I mean, tomorrow morning we 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 start at at where people left uh, after doing the natural number game and uh, and do beginner stuff uh, again. I mean, you could also just hang around here, and I'll you know I can feed people you know extra stuff to do if they're bored. So here is uh, here is Z I'm I possibly now streaming Zulip. I've just put some uh, I've just put some links up this slide. Uh, these I slides still, I'm just showing you. I still see uh, the slides. You can still see the slides? Oh, I see. I, so I'm not sharing my screen. Um, uh, well, anyway, it's in lean. Okay, that's great. Let me stick with the slide. Uh, I mean, if you, go, if you go to the Zulip chat, this is the Zulip chat uh, for lean. This is the lean for the curious mathematician stream and the Monday afternoon natural number game topic. There's links to this PDF file. Uh, and also links to the natural number game. And I'll, and I'll post them in the chat as well. So by the point is, at the end of the day, we at least want to make sure that everybody uh, knows about the rewrite tactic and uh, the REFL tactic. And ideally, uh, you know, some of the other tactics as well. So if you know, if you've played through the natural game already, uh, then you can play the lost levels and that will involve installing the natural number game on your computer, right? You can, uh, you can install the natural number game locally uh, using the lean project command. So, it, you know, detailed instructions are in the Zulip chat and I'll post them in the, uh, I'll post them in the Zoom chat now. Uh, so if you play through the natural number game and uh, the, the one thing I don't do in the natural number game is less than. I make, an, I make an interface for less than or equals to, but I don't make an interface for less than, which means that I can't state strong induction. Induction is something we have at the very beginning of the natural number game, but strong induction uh, we don't have even at the end because I never really make a good interface for less than. So if you want to prove that strong induction works, then you can play the lost levels of the natural number game. Uh, I'll explain how to do that in the chat now. Well, when I've, when I've finished playing through, but absolutely the most crucial thing is if you're stuck, 
then I'm going to be around for the next four hours, then just ask, right? I'm going to be on the Zoom, I'll be on the Zoom chat, I'll be on the Zulip chat, and I'll just be around, and so will many other experts. But, you know, this is a great time, you know, no question too stupid, this is absolutely a key thing. Right? The Zulip chat has a new member stream where many, many people ask very, very basic questions, and they get answered patiently by experts. Uh, so I think that's it. So I'm now going to go, so now let me share my, I think now I'm going to share, what am I going to share? Oh, so here, I'll, now I'm here. There's, there's the Zulip chat. Uh, you can see the PDF slides, which I just talked about, and there's the natural number game. Oh, and also I knocked up a tactic cheat sheet if anyone's interested. Uh, but now let me, you should all be using the Zulip chat as well. It's now, it's, you know, it's where all the information is appearing. Uh, for the for the conference, there's this there's this stream here, Lean for the Curious Mathematician, and that's where all the stuff you know that's where lots of information is appearing. So now let me just briefly spend a small amount of time just playing through the first couple of levels of the natural number game, and then I'll stop, and uh, you can all take over. So here, uh, <clears throat> here is the natural number game, and now you're going to tell me that I'm share if I do this now. Yeah, I get it now. So I need to maximize before I, I need to do this. There we go. Uh, so there's the natural number game. Here is, no, that's the slides. Uh, right, this is the natural number game. You can just Google for natural number game nowadays, uh, which is really nice. And, uh, and one of the things that my children complain is that the natural number game has far too many words in. Uh, so there's some words. And if I click on tutorial world, which is the very start, uh, then here's a lot more words as well. And somehow this is far too much for a 16 year old apparently. Uh, but but let, me, let me show you what's going on down here. Is that, so I, I'm just gonna play through the, the, you know, the first couple of levels and then I'm gonna stop. Uh, so the general, you know, the general natural number game framework is that you're asked to prove a theorem and you're going to prove that theorem by typing in here. This is, this is a begin end block, just like the block that uh, Scott was using, right? This is, this is where mathematicians should start learning about lean is within a begin end block. So, you know, we're in tactic mode, right? We're in tactic mode now. There. Anything with the, you know, two, da two dashes mean comments. So we're in tactic mode and we can look up here. Can you see, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we can look up in the top Excuse right. Again and we can see the goal here. So this is a completely artificial goal, x, y, and z are natural numbers, and you're asked to prove that x times y plus z equals x times y plus z, right? And the computer scientists in their wisdom note that you can prove that x times y plus z equals x times y plus z by invoking reflexivity of equality, right? Because that's the, that's the technical term for what we would regard as completely obvious. So reflexivity, there's a reflexivity tactic. Reflexivity, there. And if you spell it right, which I didn't, reflexivity, is that right? You see, and that works, great. I now, I've, I've solved this level because, because it used to say I had a problem up here, and now it says my proof is complete. And reflexivity is just far, this reflexivity tactic uh, will prove any will prove any goal of the form x is related to x if r is a reflexive binary relation, uh, and you get sick of typing it quite quickly, and so they abbreviated it to REFL, which should also work. So if your goal is ever of the form x equals x, then you can prove it with the reflexivity tactic. Uh, in fact, if your goal is also of the form x if and only if x. You can also prove that with the reflexivity tactic, because if and only if is a reflexive binary relation. Uh, so there's that. And then the next thing you have to learn about is how to sub in, right? How to substitute in. So again, here is a completely artificial goal. And this goal says, uh, we've got X and Y natural numbers. You see, I've just redefined the natural numbers. They're called my nat, my natural numbers. And here we have a hypothesis, right? H is a term of type y equals x plus seven, which is, which is the way that type theory says h is a proof of the theorem that y equals x plus seven, right? h is the assumption that y equals x plus seven. And this funny little terrifying sideways t 
after this, this is our goal, right? We've got to prove that two times y equals two times x plus seven. And uh, how are we going to do that? We're going to sub in for y, right? We know y equals x plus seven because that's our hypothesis h. And we need to prove that two y is two times x plus seven. And the way we substitute in a hypothesis is we do rewrite, right? We do rewrite, oh, let's not do that, rewrite h there. And when we, and when we use this rewrite tactic, uh, re, R -E -W, this works, uh, but uh, again, we want an abbreviation. So we went for RW, the rewrite tactic. Rewrite H, it now says, the goal now says two times X plus seven equals two times X plus seven. So you see, this is, this is sort of the confusing thing. To a mathematician, you look at this, you look at this situation here, Y is X plus seven, when you're supposed to prove that two Y is two X plus seven. I mean, this is just obvious, right? The mathematician's proof is, this is obvious. It's, you know, it's difficult to know what to say, but if you start thinking about these things very logically and carefully, you realize the first thing we need to do is we need to change that y to an x plus seven. And that's what the rewrite tactic does. And now the left hand sides of our equality, the left and right hand sides of our equality are literally equal, right? In the way that they weren't equal before. I mean, here they're equal because we know the definition of y, but here they're equal because they are literally the same string of characters on either side of the equality. And so now the reflexivity tactic will work. You see, whereas I suspect that without it, this would not work, right? If you just said, well, uh, they're obviously equal, and so we're done, you see, it's failed uh, there. So now this bottom, this bottom box here is where the errors live. You see, we've somehow, fa we've, we've failed to, this complaint here is that I'm trying to prove, I'm, I'm definitely trying to prove that some, this, this question mark M underscore two is a rather ridiculous way of saying this is a variable, right? If you're using reflexivity, you're supposed to be proving that variable equals variable, and it doesn't know what variable to use because the left-hand side wants the variable to be two times y, and the right-hand side wants the variable to be two times x plus seven. You see, so reflexivity isn't ready for this goal yet. So we rewrite h, and then we do reflexivity. And that proves it. And uh, I think the next level is also reflexivity level. Uh, yes, the next level is also, a, did I just skip one? Ah, oh, bingo. No, 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 that's a reflexivity level. I was wondering where we learn about induction. Uh, that's a reflexivity level as well. And so let me just, let me just show you the, the third tactic you need. You know, at level the end of the day, so, sorry? Level one of addition world is induction. Here we are, level one of addition world. Yeah, I've, I've finally found it. So level one of addition world, it, it turns out that, to, again, zero plus n equals n. This looks obvious to a mathematician, uh, but it turns out that you need to prove it by induction when you define the natural numbers in addition using Peano's axiom. So I won't go through the proof completely, uh, but I'll just say that, you know, as well as, as well as REFL, which won't work, there we go, and as well as rewrite, which won't work because we don't have anything to rewrite, we can do induction, induction n. And uh, one thing I've seen a lot of beginners do is they just type induction n, and uh, you see, it's done exactly what you expect it to do, right? We were trying to prove that zero plus n equals n, and we want to do it by induction on n. So we should have two problems if we want to do it. You know, we've got the base case here, and we've got the inductive step here. And if you just type induction n, then the base case comes out very nicely. We've got to prove that zero plus zero is zero. And then the inductive step, we have all these new variables called n underscore n and n underscore ih, which is kind of, I mean, we can deal with it, but these are not the best names for variables, right? Mathematicians would not call a variable nn, right? And so when you use the induction tactic, remember that you can do induction n with d and hd. This is, this is by far the most common way, you know, the, the, this is the recommended way to use the induction tactic. Give it some variable names, which are kind of reasonable to a mathematician. And now if you look at the, and now if you look at the step case here, we've got d as a natural number, not n underscore n, our hypothesis is that zero plus D is D. And our goal is to prove that zero plus the number after D is the number after D. So those are the three tactics which you need to learn. Uh, and then if, if you get the hand, you know, if you learn those three tactics, you can go all the way through here. Uh, you, can, you can run all the way through to power world. Uh, you, you can play these four levels, but if you wanna, you know, if you wanna go, you know the full Monty. You can go around this way as well and learn about inequalities, uh, and and learn some more tactics as well. But those three tactics I just showed you will get you all the way, 
will get you all the way through to power world. And if you can get through to power world at the end of the day, then that's somehow, you know, that's one of the main goals. But ideally, you would get through to power world and then brave your way through, uh, to, you know, to proposition world as well. So that's where we're going. Uh, I've spoken for half an hour, which is really quite enough. Uh, I will.